This chapter is basically a composition of shots from all over Dressrosa that serve to build up the climax of the arc. And I knew that most of the population of Dressrosa was going to play a role in pushing that birdcage because everybody wants to survive. It doesn't make sense for anybody to not cooperate in pushing that birdcage. Um, I really liked the cover page with Perona. She's a very stylish character, so it's just nice to see that. And we haven't seen Brooke in a while, so at least we get him in the cover page. I thought it was pretty creative to have Moncherie's healing powers, like, go around Dressrosa like dandelions and shit. I didn't expect that ability to have a time limit, though. And it's funny how Leo doesn't mention how long the time limit is for, because there's already too many time limits. There's the birdcage time limit, there's the Luffy regaining hockey time limit. So just to add a third one, I guarantee you, though, that the moment these warriors, like, go back to being messed up and unable to push the cage, Luffy should be able to take out Doflamingo before the Colosseum fighters collapse, if not seconds after they collapse. There is something that I do have to comment about, and this is something that I've chosen as a fan to overlook. And that's the fact that if, if the key to getting rid of the birdcage is defeating Doflamingo, there is the possibility, and I know Oda's not going to do it because, you know, Luffy takes out Dofi. That's always how it's going to be. Luffy takes down Boss. That being said, there is a part of me that, that kind of wonders if the dudes that are pushing the birdcage, and I'm not talking about the fodder dudes because Doflamingo's fodderizing some of the Colosseum fighters here, but if, if the dudes that we know are, are good at, at fighting, are good fighters. I'm including, like, Cavendish, Bartolomeo, to a certain extent Bartolomeo, uh, Fujitora, Zoro, Kinemon, uh, who else? Law! I mean, I know Law can't really do much. I mean, we saw his arm, it's dripping blood, hasn't even been able to heal properly yet. Um, and so he switches, he, he was able to pull out a room to, to go near Luffy, and I guess what he's going to do is just keep moving Luffy around so that Dofi can't get to him. My point is this, if all these dudes that are still capable of doing things were to team up against Doflamingo, do you think they would be able to not only defeat Doflamingo, but, but defeat him in time so that the birdcage doesn't fuck any other civilians up? Gotta give Frankie some credit, because he's actually pushing <laughs> in this chapter. Robin's pushing as well. With, with her Devil Fruit ability. Fujitora comes in to help the swordsman out, and he says something that I found a little bit interesting. It may be a mistranslation. He says, I may not have much strength left in these old bones, but allow me the honor of assisting you. I'm reading that and I'm like, you're an admiral, Fujitora. <laughs> are you saying, are you saying that my man Sabo tired you out? Is that what you're saying? Couldn't Fujitora technically do like a, a horizontal gravity push, you know, to stop the, the birdcage from contracting. I don't know. This is just me thinking out of the box here. Also, can Manchuri, like if she wanted to, could she heal Luffy to speed, you know, the, the recovery time maybe? That part with God Usopp about silence heathens, I thought that was really funny. Um, and I kind of wonder if Oda is going to be using Usopp for something else you know, aside from pushing the birdcage, because, you know, Usopp just basically told everybody, if you have strength left, go and push the cage. So with that logic, I would assume that Usopp would tell Hack, hey, if, if you have enough strength left, leave me here, go go for the cage. But I, I do get the impression that maybe Oda is using, is going to be using God Usopp for something else. Another thing I don't understand is why Rebecca is in this chapter by herself. Like, where's Ki I, I would assume Kiros would be near her, given the amount of trouble, you know, it took for them to reunite and, and remember each other and all that stuff. And then Violet coming back, I thought that was interesting. I'm not really sure what she expects to do against Doflamingo. I mean, we know that she has, like, those, those whale tears uh, that kind of look like hockey. But it's like, it's Doflamingo. What I'm thinking, though, is that this thing is just going to go really, really badly for the girls, Doflamingo is going to be about to kill them, and that's when Luffy steps in. That way, Oda can draw like an epic panel of Luffy rushing in last second and saving the girls. And now that I think about it, having everybody pushing the birdcage, it does boost up the morale of the country, and it also serves to unify everybody under Luffy, which is good because the country has been broken for a while. 
So everything in this chapter serves a purpose, and it serves it under the One Piece storytelling umbrella. Um, but there are some things that I think could be discussed amongst us fans. So those are my thoughts. Tell me yours in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did. I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel. Catch you guys later. Bye.